Hey, welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, we're going to take a look at programming some of the Yezu radios using Bluetooth. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So roughly a month ago, I put out a video on how to do Bluetooth cat control with the Yezu radios. Uh, fast forward a few weeks and I went to make a quick change uh, using Chirp on my 817 and realized I didn't have the programming cable that I needed anymore. Can we accomplish that with the, using the Bluetooth dongle? Absolutely. Let's jump over to the Raspberry Pi and I'll show you how. Okay, so let's go ahead and start by opening up the terminal window. Move that over just a little bit. And the first thing we need to do is get the MAC address of our Bluetooth dongle. So we're going to do that by running HCI tool space scan. Now, one thing to note here, uh, if you're using the Bluetooth cat control like I showed you in the other video, make certain that FL rig is closed or this is not going to work. Let's go ahead and scan for that MAC address. Once the scan finishes, you should see your MAC address listed out. Occasionally, I have seen the scan tool fail to find the MAC address on the first scan. If that does happen to you, just rerun that HCI tool scan command again. Uh, I'm going to highlight my MAC address, right click on that, and choose copy. The next command I'm going to run is sudo space rfcomm space bind space forward slash dev forward slash rfcomm zero. And I'm going to give it one more space and go ahead and paste in my MAC address that I copied from right here on the line above. We'll go ahead and press return, and it's just going to dump you right back out to the next line in the terminal, which is exactly what we are expecting. Now, let's go ahead and we'll move to the ham radio menu here and find chirp and go ahead and fire chirp up. Now, I've already got my radio set in the clone mode, so we're going to take and click on radio and download from radio. Now, the first time you run this, you may not have this forward slash dev forward slash rfcom zero listed here, and you may not find it listed in the drop down box either. If that's the case, just go ahead and manually type this in right here. Once you've done it once, it should remain there the next time you run Chirp. Now, I went ahead and chose my radio, which is the Yezu 817. We'll go ahead and click OK. It's going to give me some instructions on how to get the radio into clone mode, which I've already done. So I'm going to choose OK again. Then I'm going to press A on my radio to go ahead and start transmitting that data over to Chirp. It takes it just a couple of seconds to clone all of the data and then does a check to make sure that the data is good. And there you go. You can see my list right there on the screen. I'm going to go ahead and close out of Chirp. Don't need to save that file. The next thing I want to show you is how to release this bind that we did with the previous command. And that's simple enough with sudo space rf com space release space forward slash dev forward slash rf com zero. Go ahead and press return and that dumps you right back out to the command line. Now, this is uh, this works just perfectly fine, but it's a little cumbersome to remember. So let's write a quick script to make our life a lot easier going forward. I'm just going to move this over because we're going to need some of the data right there on that screen. On my desktop, I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose new file. And I'm going to name this bt chirp. And I cannot spell today. All right, bt chirp. Go ahead and click OK. You'll get that new text document on your desktop. I'm going to right click on that and just choose to view that in a text editor. 
The first thing we need to do, this is going to be a bash script, so we need to tell the system that it is a bash script, and we do that with a shebang line. So we give it the pound symbol, then an exclamation point, followed by forward slash bin forward slash bash, and that tells the system that this is a bash script. Now, remember I told you guys that we could run into an issue if FL Rig was running and using that Bluetooth dongle. We're going to make sure that the script stops FL Rig should we forget to do it. So we'll just do that with sudo space kill all, which is all one word there, space FL Rig. And that's a quick and dirty way just to shut down FL Rig should it be running when we start this script. Now let's jump back over to our terminal window and I'm going to copy this line and the one below it. So we'll copy there and we'll paste that into our document. I'm going to give it a couple of spaces here before I paste in the next command, which was the release command that we ran after we were finished. So I'll copy that, jump back over here, and go ahead and paste that in. Now, so we've got the bind uh, command in there, and we've got our release command. What we need to do in between those two, though, is actually start chirp. Now, we need to know where chirp is located on our drive. To find out, we're going to use the where is command. So where is is all one word, space C-H-I-R-P-W because I know that chirp w is the executable name for chirp. Once we've got that, I'm going to highlight that path and the file name. I'm going to right click and choose copy again. And I'll go ahead and paste that into our script over here. Now, one other thing we might want to do is we might want to tell this just sleep for one second after you've run the bind command, but before you start chirp. That'll just make sure that this uh, has a second to complete before we try to start chirp. So let's go ahead and save that. Now let me give you just a real brief rundown of exactly what's happening and why this works. Uh, we're defining our language at the top. We're shutting down FL rig if it is running. We're binding rfcom0 uh, to this MAC address here. We're sleeping for one second or pausing for one second, and then we're starting chirp. Now, the script will not run this next command until we close the chirp application. So we don't have to worry about it releasing before we are ready for it to release, but we definitely want it to release once we're done. Now that we've saved all of this information, let's go ahead and close that text file. Back in our terminal, I'm going to move to the desktop directory with cd space desktop. And we need to make our new script executable. We do that with chmod plus x space bt hyphen chirp. We'll go ahead and press return there. And if we run the ls command, you should see our new script is green, indicating that it is executable. At this point, we can simply double-click on the script and choose Execute. It takes it just a couple of seconds to fire up. Once Chirp is open, it should work just like it did a couple of minutes ago. So I'm going to choose Radio and Download. My information is all there that I had a while ago. I'm going to choose OK there, OK there, and then press that A button on the 817 to go ahead and start sending the data over to Chirp. And just like before, it's going to download all of that data. Then it's going to run a quick check to make sure that uh, it didn't receive any errors in the download. And it'll go ahead and display the data that's in our radio. You could go ahead and make changes here and then do the upload back to the radio before shutting it down. Once we do close down Chirp, it will go ahead and it will go ahead and close down that chirp application and release the bind that we did earlier between RFCOM0 and the MAC address of our Bluetooth dongle. So there you have it guys. If you're running one of the Yezu radios, the 817, the 857, or the 897, now you can use that Bluetooth dongle to program your radio with chirp. 
We'll see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.